interesting stuff. Um, there's going to be three parts. It's going to be in a slightly different time slots to what's on your agenda. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to play a little video from our partner, our very important partner, MPI, who co-funds this program with us. Uh, then we're going to have uh, Pania lead off a session talking about advanced parties particularly, and Paddy is going to facilitate some discussion amongst advanced party members. Um, and then following that, we're going to have our, our theme groups session where people will talk about our, uh, our technology groups, animal health, feeding, and genetics. So without further ado, we'll listen to Justin Gilliland, director of PGP programs. Kia ora. My name is Justine Gilliland. I'm director of the investment programs director at the Ministry for Primary Industries. We manage many of MPI's investment programs, including the Primary Growth Partnership, the Sustainable Farming Fund, and the Irrigation Acceleration Fund. Sorry I'm not able to join you in person at your conference today. This time last year, Minister Guy was congratulating MPI and Deer Industry New Zealand on signing a contract for the Passion to Profit Primary Growth Partnership Program. I'd now like to congratulate Deer Industry New Zealand and your program partners on approaching the end of the first year of the seven year program. MPI is proud to be a partner in the program through the Primary Growth Partnership and the Sustainable Farming Fund. Both of these funds aim to improve the productivity, profitability and resilience of New Zealand's primary industries through research and development and innovation. The first year of the Passion to Profit program has already seen some great achievements on farm and in market. The five marketing and processing companies who represent 95% of the venison processed here in New Zealand have committed to a two-year non-seasonal market development project. This demonstrates their commitment to collaboration as part of the Passion to Profit program and developing market opportunities. The number of advanced parties, partly funded by the Sustainable Farming Fund, and the level of participation has exceeded the original targets, a great sign that they are providing value to farmers. The collaboration with other primary growth partnership programs such as the Red Meat Profit Partnership, Farm IQ and Marbled Grass-Fed Beef has allowed the program to share and leverage findings and improve the likelihood of success for each. I know you'll be hearing more about the achievements of the Passion to Profit program and the work it will be undertaking in the future over the next few days. We look forward to partnering in the program as it progresses towards its objectives and delivers benefits for the industry and our wider economy. The Passion to Profit program will be integral in helping the Primary Growth Partnership deliver the $6.4 billion in additional GDP per annum by 2025, as forecasted by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. I wish you all the best for your conference, and I look forward to coming, catching some of the presentations on the live stream on Rural TV. Uh, so that's our MPI partner in, in the P2P program generally. Um, so I'd like to welcome to the stage Pani Flint, Dr. Pani Flint, who is currently our uh, advanced party uh, coordinator. Um, she, she picked up kind of where Amy left off in, in some advanced party coordination um, and has done a great job. Why you go, Pania? Okay. Can we just have our advanced party farmers come up, please? It's all about the farmers, not about me. Now, hopefully I've got a presentation. Okay, so first of all, I just want to say that um, I consider it an ab absolute privilege and honor to be uh, involved with advanced parties, um, really passionate about the concept. Um, I think it's a model that's working extremely well. I was running a bit of a discussion group um, in the Manawa too, and trying to think about how to make the most effective discussion group proper, uh, possible and advanced parties came along and I think they've pretty well just about nailed it. Um, oh, which button do I press? <laughs> okay, so my talk was supposed to be about running a successful advance party and I would have to say that we don't have any unsuccessful ones as far as I can make out um, so therefore I'll just talk about advance parties in general. Currently we have 15 that are up and running uh, in full swing and um, they're meeting between 6 and 10 times a year. There's another five currently in formation, um, and these are basically just self-forming groups that have heard how fantastic advanced parties are and have got themselves together to get going. Um, we have scope for up to 30, and I think um, the current way things are going, we will achieve that. Between the advanced parties, they've held over 100 meetings and had about 400 conversations about on-farm productivity issues um, where farmers get together look at the issues, come up with solutions, bounce ideas off each other and develop a plan. 
These are our current advance parties. So there are six currently in the North Island and um, eight in the South Island, um, plus a data KPI group, which is based in the South Island, um, uh, which have a special role of developing on-farm KPIs and data collection templates. And you can see the five new groups that are developing there. Um, interesting to see that some of these new groups have quite a large number of land corp farms incorporated into them, um, which is good for generating data and uh, setting examples and integrating what land corp are doing with what um, just family farms are doing as well. Each of these groups has between eight and ten members, um, and they, I've gone to the next slide probably, so they are a core group of farmers, those members are stable within that group. So what they start with is generally what carries on with one or two changes as we go. So these are what I consider to be the major success factors for advanced parties. Having that farmer-centred core group is probably the number one thing. So we're not talking about having a focus farm, we're not talking about an advisor standing up and telling farmers what to do. We're talking about farmers getting together, they identify the issues, they come up with solutions, they have the conversation. That's really good and it's a discussion group sort of model, but the other really important key factor is having a facilitator. Um, I went to an RMPP meeting recently where they talked about models for, for extension uh, and it was based around discussion groups and I think what they're aiming for is probably just about where we are. So our facilitators are trained and they've got a particular role to perform in the advanced party and it's about facilitating farmer discussions. It's not about telling that group what they should be doing. Um, without the facilitator, the, far, the advanced parties wouldn't work. So whoever designed the advanced party concept was really onto it um, in understanding that relationship that's required. The other thing about advanced parties which makes them more than a discussion group is the structure. There's quite, quite a formal structure around it, about running the meetings, um, reporting back to DINs on what's going on in the meetings, and coming down to the next point, getting commitment from those farmer members on um, the actions that they're going to take once the issues have been identified and the suggestions have been put forward, what are they actually going to do? What are they going to follow through with and report back to the group about? Um, so that's, that's a key feature and that's what we're going to see from these guys in a minute, um, with some of the things that they've actually been doing on farm. Some of the things that have come out from advanced parties which pro potentially weren't predicted with some of the softer values, I guess, around developing trust, camaraderie, um, learning together, confidence to make change. And that's been a really big one. A lot of farmers have said, um, one of the biggest things I've got out of being part of this group is I was thinking about doing this change, but being in the group's given me the confidence to go forward and do it. So these groups obviously are not the leading edge farmers that are already out there doing it. These are your everyday, run of the mill deer farmers that are just steadily making progress thanks to being involved in advanced parties. Um, I kind of made this one up, out with what's in it for me and in with let's learn together. And that comes from that trust, that camaraderie, um, that working together as a team. And another thing that we are doing more of is extending into the community as an advanced party. So that's having close relationships with the deer farmers associations, talking to other guys down at the pub, which is probably where a little bit of the um, the impetus is coming from to, to develop new advanced parties because the guys down at the pub are saying, oh, this sounds pretty good, I wonder if we can get into it. Um, and running workshops and extension days in a more formal structure. So I'm just going to quickly run through, try not to take up too much time, um, the contribution that one of our farming families has made to our Central Regions Advanced Party. We've been running a bit over 18 months now, we've got around all the groups and we've now going, got around all the farms and we're now doing a second round of our farms to catch up on what progress they've made. So we have Mike and Jan Holdaway, um, they've just recently sold their farm and retired from deer farming and uh, our branch has awarded them a life membership thanks to their contribution to the deer farming community. Mike was pretty reluctant to join because there's a number of reasons he gave. He said, oh, I've actually done most things and I'm not really looking to make any major changes on my farm. Um, nearing retirement and we'll probably be selling the farm so it probably really is something for the younger farmers to be getting into. Um, they've actually turned out to be really highly valued members of our group. Um, their experience and uh, 
having done things before means that they're able to bring experience to the group and share their knowledge but also add a little bit of measure and temper to what people might be excited about doing. Um, you know, maybe questioning whether they're jumping in too quickly or things like that. Um, although they didn't want to make big changes, they've set some really good examples by making some small changes on their farm, agreeing to do a couple of minor things, which we'll talk about in a minute, and following through and reporting back on those. Uh, the new owners of their property, a and Adrian and Angela Dempster, uh, are very lucky because Mike and Jan are really helping them into uh, running their deer operation on the farm and they are hopefully going to take over the position in the advance party. So a couple of things. One thing that Mike was worried about was his reproduction performance. This is a really, really common story across the whole deer industry. My uh, yearling hinds are not weaning enough fawns. Are they aborting? That was the, probably the thing that he thought was happening in his mind, and, and we do hear this a lot. So just say, hang on, hang on, Mike. Let's have a look at this. Um, what are the possibilities? Uh, and let's just have, just, just come up with three things that we can do to have a look at this. So how about double scanning those yearling hinds to see whether they're aborting? How about doing a bit more recording on your repro performance and seeing as most losses probably occur after fawning, um, how about we have a look at some paddock fawning uh, percentages or weaning percentages to see what's happening. So he did that, he scanned his yearling hinds and 56 in fawn in June, rescanned on 22nd of October, no losses. So it's not about the result, it's about the fact that he followed through with that action and that's what we want to be seeing these advanced parties doing getting people to say, okay, how about we have a look and actually follow through in doing it. Uh, again, this is about just getting those numbers down on paper, doing a little bit of recording, having a look at where you are, putting it in front of your, your peers and getting them to talk through it. Um, the results are, are obviously interesting and meaningful and basically show that things have been improving over time and probably 2013 was a pretty bad year, um, particularly for the yearlings and second fawners. And again, following through, writing some things down, discussing it with the group, and we can see here that he went through and got weaning percents out of those paddocks, and they all came out actually pretty good. So he's probably got a pretty good fawning environment there. This is an issue with the first fawners, though. So we had a couple of conclusions that came out of that. Um, the drought was probably the major thing, and feeding those, those yearlings well was the critical factor. Um, and then a couple of other questions that we can look at going forward with the new owners. Um, the other thing, I'm just trying to be really quick with this one, um, selling the farm, why would we put in new grasses? So he wanted to support the advanced party, get something in motion, um, because we, as a whole advanced party, we've got a real focus on feeding animals better and putting new grasses in. So we're talking about Manawatu Hill Country, traditional sheep and beef pastures, a lot of it's native, uh, unimproved pastures, and so Mike wanted to really try and push that along. A lot of considerations, a lot of discussion went into this beforehand. We got a couple of experts involved to help with that decision making as well. So just quickly, he did three paddocks, um, Owens, and he's recorded the pasture mixes that were put in. He has recorded grazing days and the classes of animals, um, and hopefully that will carry on through for maybe the first 12 months of these pastures anyway, um, so we can get a good idea of how they're performing. Um, bottom paddocks, you can see in the background there the traditional sort of pastures, and then the new grasses that are going in. Uh, close inspection of that one to try and find some coxfoot. Uh, it was there, but not where Craig was looking. Um, again, grazing days. And finally, a uh, diploid tetraploid mix, which is a um, little, bit, little bit left field for up on that type of country, um, specifically targeting wiener growth. So that's just Mike and Jan's contribution to the group and um, hopefully we'll carry on with that and just give us a bit of insight into what we're actually doing in advance parties. Okay, so I'll hand over to Paddy and our lovely panel here and we'll have a look at what some of these guys are doing. Um, thanks guys for coming along and uh, putting yourselves up in, in front of the, the group here to explain your operations. Um, I don't want to repeat anything that uh, Pani has already said about but um, um, I'd like to make a couple of comments first on APs. Uh, they're not all the same types of groups, and that's good, as you know, but they all have the same end goal, uh, I believe. There's, there's no doubt there. As Dan uh, said earlier today, it's all about confidence in what we do, and it's all about pointing towards profitability at the end. So it's certainly there. So the aim within each group is to have it customised to suit and, and being comfortable with each other and the ability and to be open and frank with each other. 
And if we can get that, the groups work. And as Pani has said, there's no unsu unsuccessful group so far and there's more groups wanting to join. Um, like, I'm sure we all have questions what we do, we, but it's great to have like-minded people out there with extra eyes and being able to look at the what-ifs. So anyway, um, today we have, we hope to demonstrate to you, because we had a group here last year that were just starting up, but today we, we hope to demonstrate to you just what some of these guys in these groups are getting out of it after good periods of time in there. There's, I think there's some of these guys in the end here have been there for two or three years. And um, I hope to be able to, today, by um, introducing these guys to you, they'll talk about their own businesses and they'll tell you what they're getting out of these groups and why they're staying involved. Um, we'll just, I'll run through quickly and introduce the guys uh, through the group. So um, Richard, Richard Gere at the far end, out of the, out of the Southland group, and Ben Beadle, um, he's here out of the Southland group as well. Um, your facilitator down there is Dean Carson, is that right? Yep. And um, next, uh, Glenn, Glenn Harris, okay, and Kim Nicholson. And they're in the Otago group. Now, both these two groups will be running two or three years. Um, and it's, it's important that we hear from them why, what they've, why they went into it, what they got out of it, and why they're still in it, and how valuable it is to their operations. And we've also got Tim in here, that is uh, probably one of the later ones that have started in a group in the Hawke's Bay. And um, it's also what Tim's value, he's getting out of it too. So he's just going to cover that from a start-up group coming in later. So that three, two out of the South Island and one out of the Hawke's Bay. Richard, um, shall we go down to you first at the end? Can you just um, introduce... Sorry. Yep, oh, down there. Introduce yourself a, a, a little and um, tell us a bit about your operation. Um, how many how many are in in your AP group? Yeah, and um, what's the deer industry mix? Just to give the, the crowd a bit of an idea of what it is for a start. Uh, there's about 10 in our group, um, all basically breeders and finishers, but Ben at Landcorp, which is just doing finishing. Um, so it's a reasonably uh, big mix, as in size-wise. We're running from guys with a couple of hundred hinds right to, well, a couple of thousand. Um, and it's been a very good mix of people. Okay, um, run us through... What drew you into the group for a start? Be and then pardon? run us through what drew you into the group for a start and then tell mm -hmm. us about what you've changed with it on your farm and your operation. You can use your slides if you want. Good, let's go. Um, I got asked to join because I was looking for something outside the industry because I moved into this place and had dealt with deer for the last 20 odd years but never on a real big scale. So I wanted to learn a bit more and upskill myself. So. Um, that's what we've done. Uh, when we first went to this place, we've been in there about seven years, we were selling all the fawns as, um, as, as wieners, and I felt that we weren't getting ahead fast enough, so probably that's the biggest thing that we've changed now, is we're fattening all our wieners, and it's made a huge difference to our, um, to our place, well, our, to our income too, to be honest. Um, uh, as a break, okay. Right. <laughs> no, no, carry on. Yep, you're right. Right, this is the first one we did, which is, we've been going a good three years. Um, this was just a quick one we sorted out. It was on um, feed pads for Heinz. Um, I was getting very pissed off with the, um, the wastage. Um, and I was only putting 500 Heinz on these feed pads. Uh, we changed that with the advance party. Um, we've now putting yeah, 900 to 1,000 on those feed pads and cutting the time they're on there. And we're cutting the wastes down quite significantly. Uh, this one here, gross margin for the store versus finished. Um, this was, we worked out, and that's the actuals for how it turned out. So, um, you know, it's made a big difference to your profitability of your farm. Richard, um, I don't know if there's another slide coming, but if we just go back to your feed pad one, um, was, was it the farm visit that 
with your group that made you consider this, or is it, or is it the effect of a very good facilitator? Or no, well, like any good farm discussion group, you always have some points. And so when the guys turn up, you go, well, hey, these are my points. What does everyone think? So this was one of the first things I said, well, hey, I'm not happy with the way get things are going with these. What can we change with them? So the the um, consensus was put more numbers in, and we've also put boards along the barriers so that they can't get their feet through and pull it forward and stand on it, so they have to just eat it in front of them. That's cool. Yeah, that's very good. Is that the last little slide? Yep. Righto, um, we'll move on to Ben. Um, Ben's in the Southland group uh, as well. So Ben, uh, the same sort of thing. Um, you don't, we know you're in the Southland group and how many are in there, so you, if you just introduce your operation a little um, and where your involvement in is, and the same thing if you want to carry on and uh, describe what you're doing, what your measures are, and what it is that you're focusing on. Yeah, I'm uh, just a man oh, stock manager on the um, deer finishing block, so we mainly uh, winter sort of 2,600 wieners, and we get them from a couple of other farms because they uh, can't finish them. So, yeah, we've got a sheep and uh, part of it as well, but the deer sort of about 8k away from that, so it's sort of down there on its own, and yeah, it's quite a good wee block, but um, generally I get all the wieners in from mid-March to, to May this year, so it's been quite good, and, and you're sort of at the mercy of the breeders a wee bit of what you're getting in, and, and uh, I go out there and have a look at them, and take out anything I don't like anyway so it's it's quite good having a bit of a uh, personal touch and talking to the breeders and seeing how things are going as well so and we have a minimum uh, entry weight into the farm of 50 kilos just to help well it was a bit lower a few years ago and they used to, the old uh, death rate was a wee bit high on the fawns with the stress of coming in they were just a wee bit too small so um, but yeah I've just mainly been doing the uh, feed growth uh, or not the uh, weaner growth comparisons between the lucerne and the plantain and the uh, just your normal grass with the clovers so um, it was just something we had down there that we thought that we could share with everyone else to tell them how it's going and and whatnot so uh, this was in autumn last year it was quite weird but um, yeah you can see there that it was all the wieners were all from the same farm and they all weighed at the same time all EID weighed too I just didn't take the best ones so uh, it was pretty fair sort of uh, weight and that just gives you an idea that in April there it was quite wet and that's why the grass ones weren't doing so well I feel but um, I mean it's not the best growth rates ever but um, I think they made up for it in the autumn with compensatory growth there so yes and then um, in the spring that was um, yeah, when I weighted them up, I had a target group of sort of 60 to 70 kilo animals that I thought I could do a bit better, and they were going to be on farm long enough that I could do a bit of a trial to see how they sort of grew for an, for a few months to um, yeah, really get a handle and see how the feed sort of compared. And yeah, it was sort of we hadn't really done much with the plantain and clover and the deer unit. Sort of got a uh, 20 hectares there, so um, and it's just one full rotation, and uh, it seemed to work quite well. I've tried it up in the sheep unit and it hasn't worked quite as well up there, but yeah, I've been quite impressed with it. Ben, um, obviously you were you're into the recording anyway. Um, from out of that, have you have you changed anything else since then, over that last six to eight months? Um, have you got no, any I've thoughts going forward? Yeah, well, I, the first year in the um, autumn was the first sort of full season for the plantain. And this year, I sort of, or last year, I sort of stocked it a bit lighter just to see what it could sort of do and how it would sort of handle it and how the deer went. And this year, I sort of ramped it up and put a few more animals on there and see what it can sort of do and test it out a wee bit more just to push the boundaries to see, uh, yeah, just to see how it sort of handle it. Cause so the other guys in, in your group, uh, have they um, considered some of the, the same stuff you're doing and taking it home with them, do you know? Or is yeah, that well I know uh, one guy's been quite interested, you know, to hear the growth rates that I'm getting out of it, whether he should be doing it as well back on his own farm with, uh, with the plantain and, and clover mix especially because he's got a bit of lucerne and everyone's got a bit of grass, so yeah, it's just sort of a wee bit different out there that, yeah, it's not sort of used as much in the deer industry from what I've heard, so. I was just looking at the, 
stock units back there a minute ago, Panair, and if these are average deer farmers, I hate to see the good ones. There's some <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was just a comment you made before and I thought, shit. Um, now we move on into the Otago. Glenn, um, again, could you, you're first up in the Otago region there, could you describe uh, your operation for us? But first off, let, you look, let us know uh, the mix in your AP, who's in it. Uh, your facilitator is Simon? Yeah, Simon. Simon Glenny. So yeah. I'm going to leave it to you to run us through that as well, mate. Um, we've got about eight of us in our group. We're fairly widespread. We come down to Palmerston and maybe going to Wanaka soon, hopefully. And up to through us and over to the Dandies Pass. Um, yeah, we've all got Heinz. Some valvoters within the group, not a huge amount. Uh, we're either all breeding, finishing, or breeding and store. Um, most of us got a wee bit of irrigation, so pretty similar, but see, still quite different at the same time. So, yeah, um, yeah. Me and Renee, we farm some bathrooms there. Um, we've got 730 hinds and muck around with that, and a few cattle as well. Uh, our project. We always fawned on irrigated pasture, um, pretty rolling, flat, boring country there. We were pretty poor fawning, um, but we were getting reasonably good wieners, and I just thought that was the trade-off. But um, since joined the group, there are guys getting very good fawning results off their hill country and running them onto irrigated pasture, and um, it sort of woke me up a wee bit really, and I thought, well, we can do that too. So um, the nard a wee bit, and then we. Yeah, we fenced up a dry land area and we kicked um, not quite all of the hinds out there for fawning and brought them back after Christmas on variegation and worked pretty good, really, as it turned out, which is always good. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, before um, you carry on there, Glenn, we should uh, recognise that there's a, there's a partner in there and I, I'd like to, I, I believe in some of the things I believe in, I belong to an AP in the Mackenzie as well and a lot of those uh, members in there, their partners play a big part in these operations. It's, uh, there's only you four guys sitting up there, but... Um, we can get her down if you want, so if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I mean, we certainly don't want to ignore those because I know they do in some operations play a very big part. So is that the s same situation down in yours? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. key role. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're very active within the AP group. Uh, yep, yep. A lot of them are, and they can be. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if they weren't doing other things, then we couldn't be there either. So it's yeah, you know, it's like yeah. yeah, important part. Yep, that's uh, cool. Sure. Okay, righto. Um, Cam. Oh, can I say? Yeah, yes, no, what doing I um, was yep. um, oh, one point that you can't, probably can't see that photo very well, but we used sixteen line netting on that new dry land fencing, and um, it's sort of priced halfway between six inch and twelve inch standard, and I'd. Yeah, I'd quite recommend that actually. We, I think we had no fawns going through fences out there. Um, very fawn proof as well, yeah. And we're also, there are two hinds, we on a lepto program with them, we've vaccinated half of them, and we'll see how, what turns out with their scanning and fawning in the next uh, well, eight months or so. See what happens there. So you're, you're attributing your um, fawn survival to that wire? Oh, that, and we're out of their faces. They're not on the irrigation anymore. Yeah. yeah, which in turn is the irrigation country is way better too. We've been able to manage that a lot better and it's uh, been quite profitable. Yep. Yep. No, that's good. Okay. Right, on, mate. Tim, um, you're in the Otago one as well. So, uh, in the Otago group. So, you won't have to describe who's in there, but uh, just give us a brief on your operation and tell us what's really grabbing you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm from the Ida Valley. Uh, for those of you who don't know the Ida Valley, it's probably drier than dry at times. Um, so we aim to, to produce a pretty big wiener and get it out the gate as fast as we possibly can. Um, we're currently running, what are we running? We're 360 hinds at the moment. We were running up to 1,000, but we lost the lease block. We've undertaken a a plan now of where we're, we're weighing um, everything uh, from weaning right through, um, judging their growth rates, getting their growth rates uh, from the last winter. Um, and it became 
almost like a drug, you could say, at times, because it was, it was a report card. We were getting results. Um, overall, the, for the winter, we ended up with a, a result of 115 grams per day. Um, we, we ended up pretty good, really. Well, it was more than I anticipated. Um, the valley can be quite cold. We get down to minus 20. Um, and there's been occasions where we haven't seen the sun for six weeks. So it's not an easy place to grow anything. Um, it's created a, a, a benchmark for us now. Um, and we've, we've really, really uh, looked to, to push forward and see if we can better it this year uh, and, and move, move further into the, uh, the finishing. Um, it makes it certainly it makes it a lot easier knowing what we've got now to, to what we've to what we're going to kill um, at springtime. They're, we separate them into their weight, weight mobs and they're grazed accordingly um, on weight, really. Um, it's shifted our... We've got it this year, probably thanks to Simon and his team as well. We've, we've got a mean kill date this year um, and that was in the, in the chilled season we managed to kill and the 20th of October was our mean kill date and we killed 93% of all stag fawns. So I think it was 186 out of 201. Um, and they hung up at 53 kilos. So pretty delighted about all that. Um, and we're pushing forward this year to, to try and better it again. Okay, so the results you're getting out of this thing, does, does that uh, give you confidence going forward? And you, Do you want to stay within the group? Or you think now you've learned all you need to learn? Or um, hard one, isn't it? I don't think I'd ever leave the group, to be fair. It's pretty open and frank. If people disagree with you, they tell you. Um, and that's, that can only be good. We're, we've probably got quite, quite a good trust amongst the group as well. Um, and if somebody sees an opportunity, then it is pointed out. Um, and most individuals are taking it on. Most, fam most farms are taking it on. Um, yeah, I... I uh, the group certainly sp um, pushes you along and makes you work a bit harder to to achieve that goal at the end of it and um, show that it can be done. Good, that's great, Tim. Right, we're going to come back through. And Tim, Tim, you uh, are the newer group starting up, and um, so I'm going to let you tell us why you've been in the industry a long, long time, um, and why you would join a group. Are you here to help these young guys get going? Or yeah, that's your words. Um, we became part of the fast finishing group in Hawke's Bay not quite a year ago. Um, and it's quite a diverse group. So we've got three of us probably been in the industry as long as I have. And I won't say I'm a great deer farmer, but we're all sort of that experience. And we go down to someone that's only just started deer farming. He's um, running 1,600 hinds and trying to finish them all in what I consider pretty hard country. But I was at the meeting with Pani and she said to me, why am I in this group? Because I know everything, was her words. And I said, I don't know anything. Um, and I learn just as much every time I go to a field day from the guys I'm with and the girls than I give out. So it came from when I was part of the Focus Farm, when I was having 150, 200 people there, I learnt more in those days out of those people than they actually learnt out of me. So I thought I could put that into the group. And they've been on going to the group, and as you say, I'm a young one, and I'm an old one, and all these young ones here, they keep me on my toes. They really teach me to get over my mind and think about what's going forward, because these are the guys that are really thinking. And, you know... As I get older, you start thinking, well, I've been doing it for a large number of years like this. It's been reasonably successful. I'll carry on doing it. But you get people like this starting to question me, and you go, well, actually, why am I doing that? Mm. So that's mm. why I'm part of the group, to learn. OK. So um, now the importance, and we can pass this round, the importance of uh, the group uh, that make up uh, is quite important. But the, what about the, the, the role of facilitator plays? Well, I'll start that. We actually went out and found a facilitator called um, Dr. Dr. Simone Hoskin. Some of you all know, she used to run the deer unit in uh, Massey, and she's got a doctorate in nutrition in horses and deer. Something like that. You used to work for her, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And we thought because we're fast finishers, a nutritionist would be ideal for our group. But as a facilitator, she doesn't tell us what to do. She sits there and facilitates. Um, and she's been really good because at the end of the, the, the minutes are fairly comprehensive. And at the bottom of every minute, there's probably two or three reading, recommended readings. So instead of us telling about what to look at chicory or plantain, and chicory's her latest big thing because everyone's gone away from it, we'll have a whole lot of reading material that she puts us on to to read about. So. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Do any of you guys want to comment on that? Uh, where, where your facilitator fits into your groups? Yeah, it's not going to get back to them. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> that one's actually here, so this is a bit awkward. <laughs> uh, well, Simon, he does a great job. He, um, yeah, like the same thing, he doesn't tell us what to do. He just keeps the group moving for the day and um, yeah, pushes us along, but actually, he's done a better at it too, he's actually challenging us a bit more and um, creating a few wee debates which is very healthy and yeah, writes a good report and keeps it all ticking away. Anybody else want to, you're right. Um, our one didn't know anything about deer, which is probably um, usual for most farm consultants and it's been good to open his eyes up to be honest. <laughs> Hey, it's honest. <laughs> no, it's good. It's about, it's about getting the best out of the group. He doesn't, he's not there to teach it. He's about there to actually um, drag the information out, obviously, and it's working. So um, uh, thank you guys for, for all those sort of things. But uh, would you, is this hard work? Uh, would you recommend this to others as a good learning tool, um, you know, and growing your confidence in your, in your business and your, your, uh, your profitability? You know, uh, would you re recommend it to others, or is this is this another task? No, nah, it's not hard work. It's actually um, you sort of look forward to the next meeting to come around, and if nothing else, it, it just takes a few lies out of what you hear from people too. I think you get a bit of truth and a bit of trust within your group, uh, which certainly it helps you make decisions better and gives you confidence to do so. So, no, nah, it's it's all good. But get under it, yeah. Cam. I don't know because I, I don't know all you guys too well, but you're obviously between you and Ben, probably one of the youngest ones in here. So, um, is this are these sort of things uh, perhaps that we might be able to suck some younger generation into? Um, you know, is this a, is this a good draw card for them to get to understand farming yeah. as well? Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a great um, a great great thing. Um, if if you've got any 50-50 decisions that you you go home and you chuck around with the wife and you chuck around with your father and, and you're not sure, you bring it to the, to the advance party and, and it's chucked out amongst probably people that are older. Uh, Tim, you mentioned being there, done that. Um, everybody's got a different angle of doing the same thing um, and perhaps those angles will do work. And in terms of younger ones, younger people bringing young people into the industry, I think we have to encourage it as, as a wider industry because um, we do need younger deer farmers, and, and pro perhaps this is the way to, to highlighting um, how many, how how easy it can be deer farming, or how hard it can be, um, whichever way you want to take it on board. Cool. Um, I don't know what time we've got. Are we getting through it. Okay. Right. Um, as I'd like to thank these guys for for putting themselves up there, and um, and I hope demonstrating to you. Um, what they're getting out of it, and uh, thank Pania for um, being involved here and, and pushing us along, and uh, I can assure you she does push. Um, but it's, uh, this, every, every one of us that are in these groups are, are really enjoying it, and as she said before, um, there's no unsuccessful ones, but um, I, I know for, for a fact that a lot of the groups that get around, nobody wants to drop out. They, they want to stay involved, so it's sort of, it's, it's almost infectious. I think, Cam, you said that before, it's very infectious. Um, and it's good, so if we can keep growing them. They're not closed shops, but, uh, you know, we've got, uh, with the, the groups, they have to be, you've got to build that trust runs that group. You, you can't just have people drifting in and out, so, but it's about getting that transfer of information. I'm sure a lot of that will shift out and cross over, and that's Pania's role. Okay. Thanks, guys. Oh no, we've been through it.
Steady. 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 Um, we, we've got we've got we've got a little bit of slack. So if, I think maybe if we take some questions on these advanced party guys now for just five minutes, yep. and then there'll be a little bit more Q and A at the end. So anyone anyone keen for a question? No one's using that one. Isn't this the resurgence of the old discussion groups that used to be about 20 years ago, with the exception that you've got the youth factor, which is excellent? Um, I'm not going to answer that. Tim, you're going to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> is that on? Yeah. Um, yes, it is, and it's fantastic to see. And I think that's, that's what's driving some of us older deer farmers to get a bit of vigour back into our farming. Yeah, Paddy, no, I've got a question. I, just, I think it's great hearing about what these guys are doing, but my question for you is, um, you know, is it going to be distributed? I mean, there's going to be papers written on I mean, how you've got a lot of these going around the country. How are you going to get it out to everybody, all this information? Or how are you going to? It was... Um, the formation of the groups was... the was the foremost thing was to get the, get them up and rolling and get the trust within the groups and and to follow on from that was uh, I think the Southland groups were some of the first ones as well you know that two to three years was to make sure that they were getting value out of themselves and then um, to start documenting that value and then that va those uh, those stuff and I think it was um, Ben said a minute ago you know he started measuring fawn growth rates on feed and so forth. That's, that's good information for every deer farmer. Uh, they can apply it, take it home and apply it, John. But, um, and I think that is the next, the next challenge, is to be able to gather that information and make it really available to others. Um, I'll put the closing comments on it. Yep. Um, yeah, so it is, it is a work in progress. Um, one of the things we're really aiming for is to have happy, confident deer farmers that want to farm into the future. So if we can get some of that enthusiasm and confidence spreading beyond advanced parties, um, that really is the aim. It's another number of avenues we're looking at. Um, we are still fa in fairly early days with advanced parties. We've got a conference coming up in Methven next month where we're going to get all our advanced parties together, um, have a look at some common themes that have been running through the groups um, and get the facilitators together. And one of the big questions we're asking is where to from here? Um, we do have a, a number of ideas, I mean you would have all seen a lot of publications coming out in Deer Industry News um, about what's happening in advance parties and again you probably get the feeling of well that's great for those that are in, in those advance parties. Um, there's obviously scope for more to start up uh, and we would like to push that as far as it can go. Um, we're also looking at having these at the end of our seven year project, having them self-governing um, self um, so that they're actually generating funds within themselves and they can keep that momentum going and that can have an infinite number of them um, operating around the country. It's really that, that farmer to farmer peer support, it's people talking to other people, that's the big success factor here. It's not about new research, it's not about someone reading another article about what some farmer's done in the paper and deciding that they're going to do it on their farm. Um, so we've got uh, workshops are a good way of doing it. So these advanced parties need to be open to their local community and really thinking about how they're going to run their workshops, maybe have an open day on their advanced party farms. If people are interested, then they need to come along and have a look. John, just to go further than that, uh, there's been a big push to make sure we actually record the starting point and record what gains we're making as we're going along. And um, that's Pania's role, uh, is to make sure that the groups are doing that. Um, believe me, it, it's, it's a commitment you take when you go in. You know, we put our hands up to go into these, uh, into these advance parties. Uh, but it is a commitment. We're expected to turn up on the day when they're doing it. You can't just go on a whim. So, you know, it's a commitment to go there too. And it's a commitment to continue through with uh, a plan that you put in place. But um, recording the starting point and reporting, r recording exactly what gains we're making out of this, and then it's going to be collating that and transferring it out um, so everybody else. But is, as Pania said, there's options there for other groups that think if they've got a real value, they can, a wee group of them. It doesn't have to be eight, it doesn't have to be 10. 
they can, they can put their hand up. There's, there's options there to start more groups. There really is. And these guys, I think, demonstrated today that they're getting true value out of it. They don't want to chuck it away. They don't want to chuck it away at all. Uh, wouldn't be, uh, uh, without being fitting to, for me to comment about this, that um, there's, a, there's a DFA branch network out there of over 20 branches that are crying out for um, input and um, things to do. I think that's where you guys got to start with, with put, getting it out there to, to, the, um, to the general Joe Blow. Um, make, make use of it, it's there, and um, I'm sure that between the advanced party group and the DFA that we can actually have some field days and have some get-together meetings that get, get the, all that knowledge out there. Chris, um, I've been a little remiss in not saying that the DFA have been very supportive of this thing going through as well, and they have. They've, you know, uh, DFA members have turned up um, to a lot of the initiating uh, advanced party groups, and the, they've really helped us get them up and rolling because they are the, they are the strength behind it too. So it's a, it's a whole industry good thing. Can I just say too, um, we've been going two years our group, and obviously anything we do, we don't get results straight away. We're just getting results on some of the more major projects now, so I'm sure they will come out, but it all takes time as well. There's a few wee quick ones you get something out on, but the bigger ones, it's a bit of work in progress, and it can take up 12 months before you can actually get some hard data to send out to everyone. You're starting to sound like a scientist, Glenn. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Whoops. Uh, is there? Sorry. <laughs> I knew it would come. <laughs> Everybody happy with that? That's cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks these guys. Yeah, just while we're, we're shuffling around, John, an answer to John's question, a, a slightly provocative response is if, if Ben does a whole report on his feeding trial, and it, it gets put in someone's reading pile, the same as someone is putting stuff in Tim's reading pile, is it going to get read? Do you know what I mean? So it's more than actually what, what the behaviour change that these guys are doing, there's, there's more than just the information is, you know, that's getting passed over. There's, there's you know, the, the confidence and, and the motivation are, are the key parts. Mm -hmm.